Imagine a quiet neighborhood, a peaceful family home turned into a horrifying crime scene overnight. This was the setting in Washington, where the Keller family resided, the embodiment of an unassuming life. Nestled amidst the tranquility of nature, their house stood as a beacon of warmth and safety. Peter Keller, a seemingly ordinary man, was at the helm of this household, a man who was known to have a doomsday attitude, yet, his neighbors knew him as reserved and reclusive. Behind this facade of normalcy, however, lurked a darkness that was yet to be unveiled. The Kellers, like any other family, were living their routine life, oblivious to the impending doom. The father Peter went about his day, his wife and daughter unsuspecting. Day after day the sun rose and set, casting long shadows that danced on the walls of their home, a subtle foreshadowing of the darkness that was about to descend. Without any alarming signs, the peaceful community was soon shattered by an unthinkable act of violence, a crime so heinous it would leave the town and the nation in shock, an event that would transform the quiet neighborhood, forever marring its tranquility. The story of the Keller family is not one of peace and harmony as it appeared. It's a tale that takes a dark turn, a narrative punctuated by a chilling event that disrupts the serenity of their lives and sends shockwaves through the community. Life was normal until one day, a chilling event sent shockwaves through the community. This was the day when the unthinkable happened, a day that would forever be etched in the annals of the town's history. But what was this event? What could possibly shatter the peace of this quiet neighborhood? As we delve deeper into this story, prepare to uncover the grim reality of a crime that was, indeed, unthinkable. A house engulfed in flames, a scene of utter chaos, but the real horror was yet to be discovered. On that fateful day, fire crews arrived to find a home swallowed by the unforgiving flames. A house once filled with life and laughter reduced to ash and ember. As they fought the blaze, little did they know, they were fighting against more than just the fire. Once the flames were tamed, the grim discovery was made. The bodies of a mother and her child, victims not of the fire, but of something far more sinister. The shock and horror of this discovery sent shockwaves through the community, a ripple of fear that something was very wrong. The local authorities were called in, their job to piece together the puzzle of this tragic scene. The fire, they realized, was a cover-up a smokescreen to hide the true nature of the crime. It was not an accident, but a carefully planned act of violence. The victims were identified as the wife and daughter of Peter Keller, a man who was nowhere to be found. As the investigation unfolded, the picture became more and more chilling. The fire was not the end, but the start of a trail that led to something much darker. It became clear that this was not a simple case of arson, but a premeditated act of murder. The realization that the fire was a diversion, a distraction from the real crime scene, was a gut punch to the investigators. This was no ordinary crime, and the perpetrator was not an ordinary criminal. They were dealing with someone who had meticulously planned and executed a heinous act and then disappeared without a trace. But the puzzle was just beginning to unfold. With a killer on the loose and a community in fear, the race was on to unravel the mystery of the fire and the discovery. The investigators had their work cut out for them, but they were determined to bring justice to the victims and closure to a terrified community. Little did they know they were about to uncover a tale of horror that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. Hidden deep in the woods, a fortress of solitude held the key to the mystery. In this secluded haven shielded by nature's embrace, Peter Keller had crafted his sanctuary. A self-built bunker, it was a chilling testament to the man's meticulous planning his readiness for a doomsday of his own design. The authorities, in their pursuit of justice, stumbled upon this eerie lair. The bunker, like a twisted mirror, reflected the man who had once occupied it. The walls whispered of his paranoia and preparation. It was more than just a hideout, it was a manifestation of Keller's distorted reality. Inside this fortress, they found a chilling artifact, a video diary, an intimate window into the mind of the man behind the unthinkable crime it was a narrative of his thoughts, his plans, an insight into a psyche veiled in shadows. The diary, while providing a glimpse into Keller's planning process, left many questions unanswered. His motives, shrouded in uncertainty, remained an elusive puzzle. In the bunker, they also found a significant cache of money. This unexpected discovery hinted at a plan that went beyond the horrific crime. 
It was a grim reminder of the lives lost, a potential resource that could be turned into a beacon of hope through a scholarship fund in the victim's memory. The bunker held more than just physical evidence. It was a chilling testament to Keller's state of mind. A man who was well-armed, prepared, and harbored a doomsday attitude. A man who had committed an unthinkable act, then retreated to his fortress in the woods. The diary, a testament to a mind lost in darkness, held secrets that would chill the soul. The bunker, the diary, the cache of money, all pieces of a macabre puzzle, facets of a crime that had shaken the core of a community. As the investigators delved deeper, they hoped to unravel the truth hidden in the heart of the woods. The diary, a window into a disturbed mind, began to unravel the horrifying truth. With a chilling detachment, Peter Keller chronicled his meticulous preparations. The video diary, hauntingly void of emotion, offered a glimpse into his chillingly methodical planning process. It was as if he was preparing for a camping trip, not orchestrating the demise of his family and his retreat into a self-built bunker in the wilderness. The diary entries painted a vivid picture of a man consumed by a doomsday attitude. He spoke of his bunker as a sanctuary, a fortress against the world he was convinced was on the brink of collapse. His words, cold and calculating, echoed with a grim resolve. He was preparing for the end, whether it was his own or the world's, it was hard to tell. In his disturbing recordings, he never once mentioned his wife and daughter, the victims of his unspeakable act. There was no remorse, no second thoughts. It was as if they were mere footnotes in his grand plan, inconsequential in the face of his obsessions. Keller's diary, a chilling testament to his state of mind, was a labyrinth of his thoughts. It was a maze that investigators had to navigate, hoping to find a motive, a reason for his heinous acts. But the diary provided no such insights. Instead, it was a testament to a mind spiraling into darkness, consumed by paranoia and a doomsday fixation. The diary was a chilling reminder of the danger that can lurk beneath the surface, hidden behind the facade of normalcy. It was a chilling testament to the fact that monsters don't always lurk in the shadows. Sometimes, they are right in our midst, hidden behind the veneer of everyday life. The diary ended abruptly, leaving more questions than answers. The bunker, the diary, the lingering questions, all led to one shocking conclusion. The sinister labyrinth deep within the woods concealed more than just the remnants of a man's twisted vision of a doomsday escape. It was here, within this self-constructed fortress of solitude, that the chilling denouement of this tale unfolded. The authorities, their senses heightened by the disturbing content of the video diary, discovered Peter Keller's lifeless body. The man who had meticulously planned an unthinkable crime, annihilating his own family and retreating into the wilderness, had chosen to end his own life. The gun found by his side was a haunting echo of the weapon used to murder his wife and daughter, a chilling confirmation of his guilt. The discovery of Keller's body brought a macabre closure to this unsettling saga. It was an end as grim and perplexing as the man himself. The reasons behind his heinous act, his motives, remained shrouded in the impenetrable darkness of his mind. In the aftermath, authorities uncovered a significant sum of money stashed away in the bunker. A glimmer of hope in the midst of horror, this unexpected find offered a chance to honor the memory of the victims, a scholarship fund, a beacon of light to rise from the ashes of this tragic tale. In the end, the community was left grappling with the horrifying reality of a neighbor turned murderer, a man who had walked amongst them, harboring a darkness beyond comprehension, a chilling reminder of the demons that can lurk behind the most ordinary of facades, a tale of a man lost to his demons, a family destroyed, and a community left to pick up the pieces.